a, um, a short and sweet agenda uh, to, um, as the uh, conference starts to close. So just quickly about SOA Software. So we're an enterprise software company based out of sunny Los Angeles. And we do a lot of great work with Microsoft uh, and the Microsoft platform and customers who are looking for API and SOA management solutions. So what that means in a nutshell is as you guys are coming out with BizTalk services and WCF services, Web API services, and other types of applications running on the Microsoft platform, we're going to help you to turn those into a well-managed portfolio of services that you can secure and monitor and share. And we offer very powerful API management tools that will allow you to put out a very strong consumption model to make it easy to share and um, have uh, app developers utilize those services. So the way to think about it today is that if you feel that you don't have enough control, or governance, or management over your services today, SOA Software can help you very much uh, to help solve uh, some of those concerns. And in, a sen in, in, in essence, you can see some of the key areas that we care about, things like lifecycle management, service integration, gateway services, developer engagement and analytics. These are the things that we help you with uh, throughout all of your environments, whether it's on the cloud or on-premise. And we have a lot of great solutions. Uh, we don't have time today to go into detail, but things like our lifecycle manager solution that helps you with the full service lifecycle of your services, API gateway, which we're actually going to talk a lot about today, which helps you with your runtime, and our community management support, which helps you with things like analytics and developer engagement. Okay. One last note about uh, SOA Software before, before we dive into the, the bulk of the presentation is just some nice recognition we've been getting from leading uh, analysts out there. So uh, Gartner's given us some nice, nice recognition in 2013 in their application services governance space. And actually, just last quarter, Forrester gave us a lot of great um, uh, uh, ratings uh, on our solution in their API management wave. So just a lot of exciting things out there from analysts. Always nice to get that recognition for what the leadership that we're providing in the SOA management, API management space. All right. So with that, why don't we dive in uh, to, the, uh, to the heart of the matter. So in essence, we uh, worked with a uh, major US retail grocery chain. So as you can imagine, these guys own a large number of uh, grocery stores um, uh, in, in, in America. And you can imagine that at the end of the day, people like you and me, uh, we're tired, we're hungry, we want to go to the supermarket, we want to get dinner. And the question is, is which supermarket do we, do we go to? And in today's world, it's become very competitive and, and customers uh, don't just want a nice local supermarket. They want one that gives them a great digital experience. This customer is no different. They want to make sure that they can attract millions of uh, consumers and customers to their stores. And they want to start doing that through uh, new mobile uh, solutions. Okay? So that's essentially what the customer is all about. Their goal is to build a mobile platform that they can use to create these uh, new uh, customer relationship channels. And the initial things they were interested in are things like store content to be able to push out interesting things to their uh, customers. Also digital coupons, loyalty programs to keep these customers coming back, and fuel discount programs to give customers those nice discounts on fuel when they go shopping. So kind of the things you would imagine a supermarket chain would want to um, improve their, their, uh, their um, communications with their customers around. And from a business objective, you can kind of imagine what this is all about. Increased store sales through increased loyalty, improve communication, and offer a lot of positive digital experiences, OK? So that's kind of what the customer was after. And their big question is, is what kind of technology providers and partners can they go to to actually uh, realize this solution, OK? So when it comes to the solution, we're talking about things like rich partner uh, and on-premise and application integration. So integration was a very, very key part of this solution. From the mobile standpoint, things like JSON, REST, OAuth, and HTTP were very key. But then you had a lot of integration with heterogeneous technology, things like IBM uh, technology, uh, Microsoft, and also cloud and SaaS providers. Okay? Also strong service management capabilities. That's where SOA software comes into play. And a lot of this boils down to rapid, cost-effective time to value. They don't want to get bogged down in having to build out a lot of infrastructure. They want it available immediately. In terms of SOA software and Microsoft, what were some of our benefits? Essentially, all the things that the customer was looking for. Things like increased agility, cost effectiveness, a strong uh, product strategy and roadmap, heterogeneous technology support to support all kinds of platforms moving forward, and a lot of rich service management features. And we'll get into details in that in just a moment. But why don't we actually dive in and take a look at the architecture of this solution. So you can see here the main components. We're going to go into some detail on all of these. But essentially, you have the mobile experience at the top. These are your iPhones, your Androids, your, your Windows phones. And they are what the customer is using. 
the customer is hitting an API gateway. This is essentially one of the core products and solutions that SOA software offers. The API gateway makes it very easy for traffic to come into the solution, and we can uh, add all the value to the transaction so that it can pull together all these other pieces. The other pieces being things like business logic, Azure services, partners that are providing all the value in terms of a lot of the um, loyalty programs and, and the fuel programs and so on. And of course, you can't forget about the on-premise data. So uh, this customer has quite a bit of customer data on-prem, and you actually have to be able to support that as well. If you actually take a look at the data flow, you can kind of see how a particular transaction, like looking up a coupon or looking up some customer information, how that flows. You start at the top with the mobile experience. That goes to our gateway. Gateway goes out to partners and Azure services, and also down to business logic. And business logic also goes out to partners and Azure services, and also integrates with on-prem. What I should point out here is that everything with the dark blue background is running on Microsoft Azure. Okay, and we're going to get into more details about exactly what that is, but essentially the majority of this solution is actually a cloud-based solution. So it's a very exciting and innovative development, and it's helping to uh, add the kind of value that we talked about earlier in terms of time to value and so on. Okay, so with that at a very high level, why don't we dive in? What I want to do is I want to start on the bottom, talk about each component, and as it, we, we move up to the top, you can see how it all comes together for that uh, mobile customer who just got off work, they're hungry, they want dinner, they want to figure out which supermarket they want to go to. So we start with on-prem, and with on-prem, it's actually IBM-based systems, IBM data stores, and we actually have SOA Software's API gateway running on-prem. I didn't show it in the architecture diagram, but the gateway is helping with things like security and routing and DMZ access to that IBM backend data. So essentially, anytime the cloud needs access to any of the enterprise data running on-premise, then we have all the right pieces in place in order to do that, okay? Moving up from there, if we get back to the cloud, the partners were hugely important here, right? So things like content management, loyalty program, uh, fuel programs, uh, cloud-based email services, and obviously, of course, uh, digital coupons, these are all provided by third-party content providers, all running in the cloud, all SaaS-based solutions, and they all needed to be integrated with uh, on the Azure Cloud. So you can kind of get an idea of what value these different partners played in the total solution. So it was definitely a big part of the solution. And the, the, the integration here was typically REST-based. So it was a fairly lightweight, simple integration with most of these providers, okay? Moving on from there, still in the cloud, we're talking about the Azure services, made a, use, made a lot, a, a large use of Microsoft Azure. Everything from Azure VMs, to Azure AD, table storage, worker roles, we used a lot of, of piece parts. Uh, from Microsoft Azure, the VMs were hugely important for providing the horsepower for compute, but also things like worker roles where the business logic was, uh, was uh, running and things like table storage to do things like um, security mediation and other important pieces there. So definitely the Microsoft Azure services played a huge role in adding all that functionality that was needed for the uh, fast time to value, okay? Now, two last components here. In the business logic, business logic is running in Azure, and the business logic is running as uh, Microsoft Azure worker roles, if you guys are familiar with that technology. So it's a .NET-based solution using NetTCP and Windows Security. And this is actually a really interesting part of the solution because the business logic is all running in the cloud. Typically, you would think of business logic as running more on-premise than anything else, but this is all written from scratch and running in the cloud. It's actually a very innovative use of the cloud because the customer got all these traditional powerful technology like .NET and NetTCP, but they got the auto-provisioning and the auto-scaling in the cloud. So you really can't beat that. They were able to very quickly get all that business logic into the cloud and running very quickly. And the business logic was interacting with the partners in, uh, in, in the SaaS cloud um, uh, space and also utilizing uh, Azure services that we talked about earlier, okay? Last piece there is the API Gateway. And the API Gateway kind of pulls everything together, and it's a very important architectural aspect of the solution. API Gateway is that inbound place that receives the initial message from the customer looking for that discount on, uh, on, 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 on getting dinner. And the API Gateway is doing a lot of important things like orchestration, security, mediation, transformation, monitoring metrics, a lot of that very important stuff, and it's fanning that all out to the rest of the infrastructure, whether it's to Azure, or to business logic, partners, which, and if it goes to business logic, it's bound to the on-premise. So that gateway is playing a really, really critical role. The API gateway is also making sense and adding a management layer to all of this. So all of these partner services and Azure services and business logic can all be easily cataloged and understood. 
So you're not in the dark about what exists and where it's running, how it's doing, how much traffic is going there, and so on, okay? And then finally, of course, you have the mobile layer, uh, REST, JSON, OAuth, hitting the API gateway in order to get those digital coupons, in order to do the fuel loyalty, and so on, and that sort of completes the solution. So if you look at it in the big picture, it's actually a very nice, very comprehensive solution. Bulk of it's running in the, cl in the cloud, making it very easy to uh, get this solution implemented very quickly, but also make it a very, very rich solution where these partners are contributing huge amounts of value. Business Logic is doing huge amounts of valuable things. Azure is kind of that, that uh, substrate that's providing um, a huge amount of services. And of course, customers still gets to do all of their on-prem work. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of the big picture of the solution. Very, very innovative architecture, very, very good architecture for what the customer is trying to achieve, okay? All right, so now that you guys understand the, the architecture of the solution, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the key parts here? What did we learn from this? What kind of words of wisdom can we impart to you? So uh, number one, uh, the importance of clearly defining interfaces and schemas at all tiers. That includes data interfaces and service interfaces. So you know, this is not one team. This is a distributed team, variety of different partners and development teams involved, and not everyone knows about everyone else. So without clear interfaces and schemas, you get lost. Either you are contributing an interface or you're consuming an interface. One way or another, you need order over that. And that's another nice thing that SOA software offers. It's the ability to uh, document and make clear what the interfaces are across all these different pieces the worker roles, the SaaS providers, the on-premise, a lot of data, a lot of interfaces. You need to keep that straight. You can't just assume that everyone knows what, what those are, okay? Ensure appropriate security over the entire life of the transaction. So in these days, you know, you can't be too safe. There's too many data breaches. We have full security in every aspect of the solution, whether it's in the cloud or cloud to on-premise or on-premise or with Azure. Even within Azure, we ran an Active Directory um, domain that was used just for system level communication, okay? So there was a lot of security everywhere. Next one, anticipate mediation at all tier entries and exits. This is kind of the key part of what integration is all about. You can't assume that the guy next to you that you're talking to is going to talk the same language as you talk. Even if you're assuming the technology is similar, maybe they're both Microsoft-based solutions, you still can't assume they're the same. You need that the strength of mediation primitives everywhere to make sure that it's very easy to integrate to whoever you need to integrate with, okay? And uh, last guy on this slide, um, use the right technology to fit the needs of each tier. So for example, that those worker roles, that was a .NET solution. And therefore, it utilized things like NetTCP and, um, and, and Microsoft-based technologies. So stick with that. That's going to go fast. The guys working on that will be able to move quickly. Don't force a technology to adapt to the way other parts of the system work. Let it do its piece, but then mediate across. Okay? So that's really another important piece. A couple more. Clearly delineate your environment. So in Azure, you know, even though everything is sort of, sort of cloud-like, you still want to make sure you have very clear environments. Dev, QA, prod, and a promotion process uh, through them. Okay? You also want to make sure that you can meet the right service levels across all the tiers because these are all so disparate. Right? They may not all work the same way. They may not all scale the same way. They may not all uh, react to load the same way. So if you have a single SLA you're trying to hit for your customers, Make sure all the components can do that. And some of the key areas you want to think about are latency, how long transactions are going to take in each of the tiers, throughput, what kind of volume can they actually uh, handle, uptime, so what happens if they're going to be down and how long will they be down. If one piece in the chain is down, there's a good chance that everything is down, and that's really bad news for the customer. Okay? Peak load, you want to make sure that everything can scale uh, to fit the needs of, um, of, of the customer. And of course, scalability, you just want to make sure that each piece actually does scale very, very nicely. All right? So that gives you an idea of some of the um, uh, patterns and practices that were important here, probably important for you as well as you start pulling some different things together. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to share. I wanted to keep it um, short and sweet. Um, so uh, please feel free to uh, contact us. We actually have a, a table over here. So as you guys are, are uh, head heading out, feel free to stop by and say hi. You can answer some questions. Also feel free to reach directly out to me, simon.barrer at sway.com, or visit us at sway.com slash Microsoft. A lot of great content um, at sway.com. Um, so that's it. So just wanted to um, give you guys an overview of a real world architecture. We're pretty excited about the results. The customer's excited as well. And it's a kind of um, architecture that allows you to um, develop very quickly and make use of the best features of uh, the Azure platform. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. We